Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa Bubari, your expert hypnotherapist. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Wow, here we are. Yet another week has gone. I don't know where you are in life, but wherever you are, may you be safe and happy. Well, today's uh, session is going to be yet again a continuum of uh, the language of love and today i want to talk about how is it how do you let go of yourself hello mercy how are you doing uh, sweetheart and how is it that we get to lose ourselves and today's session is mostly about women uh, hi, Ida. Hi, Chris. It's so good to have you here with me. So how do we do this? I've been seeing a, a slew of clients. Uh, all my clients, it seems like this entire month and a half has been clients who come to me and they say, I do not know who I am anymore. It's like losing themselves. So have you ever woken up in the morning and say, what is life all about? What am I doing with my life? I am sick and tired of doing the same thing over and over. And you look yourself in the mirror and you can't even recognize you. And I'm not talking about the makeup. I'm talking about it's like what is going on in your life because so many of my clients especially women um it's like wake up do your chores take care of the kids take care of the breakfast uh, go to work work all day come home cook do errands and it's like this monotonous thing and when it comes to taking care of herself, it's like by the time she comes to take care of herself, there is the siblings, there is the parents, there is the friend who calls and says, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. It is constantly being torn and pulled by so many and gets to do everything for everyone else and feels guilty to do something for herself. Do you feel that way? Do you feel guilty to do something good for yourself? I know there are so many who look good, they are everywhere, they take care of everything, their hair is immaculately perfect, the makeup is always perfect, the nails are done, the dresses are done, and yet deep inside, deep inside they still feel i'm not good enough and who am i so when we get to this point of this pull and push i was writing some things and i said how do we get out of this um, point of being our own victim that I am not good enough, that I am not worthy, I am not successful enough, I am not pretty enough. Like one of my clients, it's like she's absolutely gorgeous, but walks in with no makeup, hair is not done, nothing is, she's not caring for herself. Why? Because she's taking care of four grandchildren between two kids, and she's running from one place to another. In the meantime, and here is the kicker. And it's not that clients come to me because of that. Clients come to me because they feel torn, broken. It's either the smoking, the overeating, binge eating, even a client who is self-destructively, all her fingers, the nails are wonderful, but all around, it's all bloody because she is 
just literally biting herself. And another person who is just digging at herself because she is not happy. So when we are not happy with ourselves and we literally diss ourselves for others and becoming our own doormat, and I'm talking about our own doormat. You see, doormats are for, uh, for people to wipe their feet and then walk inside. But when we become our own doormat, that we allow other people to walk on top of us, to clean their shoes, their feet, and you think to yourself, as long as I am doing things for ourselves, for others, I am going to be liked, I am going to be appreciated. What it brings down to is that inner desire the inner desire to be appreciated, to be accepted, to be loved. So when you or the person who gets to be the more doormat does not love herself, everyone is going to walk through that and step on it to go inside and hoping that you will come inside so that you can take care of everything else that there is when they share things with you so you can do that. Now, maybe I am talking about surface, but when we think about the success of the ones who have achieved success, the ones who seem to have everything Together, we forget there is a human being behind all that. Behind the person who is a true achiever, that she wakes up at five o'clock in the morning, that she stays up until midnight, that she is doing everything not only for herself, but taking care of herself has to become priority. That five o'clock, it's about the children to sit over there and write her goals and say, those are all the things that I have to do. And then start her day at six o'clock, drive for an hour or an hour and a half. If she is in a managerial position, that not only she has her home, her family to think about, the stress of getting to work, and then all the problems and the issues that arise at work and taking care of that and then coming home and guess what? Then there is the need of the husband, right? To take care of the husband, to take care of the children. And it's like, Calgon, take me away. So yesterday I was with one of my clients and I was bawling. I was in tears and she said, all the work you do, that you listen to, how do you handle it? And I'm going, this is nothing compared to what you are doing, taking care of four grandchildren, two households, your own household, the demands of a sick husband, and a mother that is in the convalescent, and you are a manager of an office. How do you do it? Kudos to all mothers that are not being appreciated. That when a child is sick, you are worried about the child, taking care of the child. When the school calls, you're taking care of that. Kudos to all of you. And that's not a superman, superwoman. I want you to think about yourself and say, I am super me. Me. It's the true empowerment of who you are comes from yourself, appreciating and accepting yourself. And instead of making your knuckles bloody, how about appreciating, kissing your knuckles? And instead of hurting yourself when you are angry, when you are resentment because you don't feel supported, I'm going to give you techniques of doing this. I'm going to give you techniques so that you can help yourself and share and speak in voice. 
In the meantime, I want to also say there is the other side that men also have so much pressure on them because they really do not understand the language of a woman that she feels as if she has to take care of all of that because if she doesn't, everything is going to fall apart because they don't know how to delegate. And if they do, maybe in the past it has fallen apart or has not happened. So they become the superwoman who becomes the masculine and the feminine energy that she becomes the mother, the father, the caretaker, the doormat, the manager, the cleaner, the babysitter, everything. And also the incredible sensual sexual person that a man expects her to be in the bedroom. Right? So when there is pain, when there is true pain and hurt, when your body is falling apart and you've got pain without realizing where it's coming, or instead of feeling the pain, you numb the pain by doing more for others, becoming more involved outside. And it's not always about money. On International Women's Day, uh, one of the speakers said, when you wake up at five o'clock in the morning, make the bed, right? And then have 16 ounces of water, have some quiet time for yourself, exercise and move and do things for yourself an hour before you even do anything for anyone else. So. Here are, hi, Seda John. Hello, Michael. Hi, Mary Lou. Congratulations for everything that you have achieved. And here you are, someone who has truly gone beyond to do the work internally, externally. Because that's what we are supposed to do, not only for the outside, for the husband and everyone else, like clients and children. Yes, they all have their own place. But certain things. So how do we fill the void within? How do we quiet that voice? Not by anger, not by resentment, but to fill it with more love, kindness, your own appreciation that when you go and have your nails done, instead of being on the phone and connecting again, while you're connecting again, you are disconnecting with yourself. So the next time, when you take time to take care of your hair and they're washing your hair and you lean back and it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, most men truly close their eyes and enjoy their haircut or they are doing everything. But the woman that I am talking about, when someone is washing your here, do this. Just sit back, lean back, and allow them to pamper that five minutes of vigorous massaging your scalp. And when the water is rinsing your hair, just think about all the thoughts, all the negative thoughts, all this cloud of things that you are worried about, concerned about. Let them all wash away from your hair into the basin of that sink. Hmm? And also, when you are having your nails done and sitting there having your feet done and being rubbed, close your eyes and become one with every little finger that is touching and massaging and caressing. Allow that half an hour to 40 minutes be a time out for you of sanctuary. Appreciating those moments that you are truly being pampered, not disconnecting from your body that is being massaged and loved. And you're disconnecting again to see what's happening outside. That 45 minutes is the time that you can give to yourself. If you are cooking, put the music on and move 
with the cooking. Enjoy that time that you are cooking so that you can nourish not only yourself, but your loved ones. You see, it's not necessarily disconnecting and telling everyone, I have to have my time, but the time that you have, you enjoy. So I wrote, how do we feel those? And when is it that you gave up? Truly look back, think back. When did you give up on you? Was it in high school? Was it in junior high? Was it in college? Was it when someone said, when someone broke your heart or broke up with you? Because nothing is worth you giving up on you. And so when there is that push and pull, when we feel that push and pull, we're constantly stretching. That stretch is going to get thin. So it's the small little moments in your life that I want you to take time and be more loving. When you're sitting in the car, ah, put your favorite music on. Um, you know, it, it's for so many of you who know I am Armenian. There are two words that I would like to be dis disassembled, washed away, erased from our vocabulary. One is piti, the other one is amota. So amot means shame. When something we do or our parents turn around and say, miara, amota, that means don't do it. Be ashamed or it's shameful. It has nothing to do with what we're doing, but it's their own perception. So I really would like you to consider thinking about how many times have you been told not to do something because in their perception, it is amot or shameful, not because it's truly reality shameful. You're not doing anything to be ashamed. You're not walking around or running around butt naked. Even that, little kids, they want to collect, put them together because they're saying, Amota. No, it's not. It is the freedom of the body. When someone is doing something to care for themselves, it's not shameful. And the word piti, that means it's a must, must according to who? To grandparents who are no longer here or grandparents because of their tradition and not our tradition. So those are the two things. And I'm not talking about the logic, but really think about because we're constantly from the old school, from traditions are taught that way not because of the reality but the long time ago the old book the old school and here we are grown up with that same pattern so today i'm going to ask you that there are certain patterns that you need to become aware that because you laid your bed, you don't have to, because you made your bed, you don't have to lay in it, right? That if this is destructive, the loneliest time in my life was when I was married and I laid in bed with my husband and I had tears coming down, feeling lonely. Not because I was alone, because I felt lonely, unseen, unheard, unappreciated. And it doesn't matter if we're a man or a woman. It happens. And that is the loneliest time. We can be in a gathering and still feel lonely because we are not seen, we are not heard. Just a week ago, I had a 12 and a half year old 
child, girl, brought over here because she does not feel seen or heard at home. Her mom died when she was two years old. And since then, she's been pampered and taking care of grandma, father, new mom, mother, stepmother, stepchildren that merged two families together. So she's gone through of hurting herself, cutting herself, and wants to feel as if she belongs, but belonging to the wrong people in school. And you know what she felt? Unseen. An hour and a half later, she's taking that chain off, sitting like a boy, wanting to be tough, that I get to hold my hand and say, I'm holding space for you. And an hour and a half of hypnotherapy and connecting, shifting from the tough, I am so tough, you can't break me, to I am a girl, I am beautiful, I am worthy. I matter. And she felt heard and seen. So in a way, what I want this message to be is not only as an adult, as a 70-year-old, 60-year-old, 50-year-old, 40-year-old, 30-year-old, 20-year-old, or 11-year-old, even younger. I want you to see you. That when you look in the mirror, this is what I wrote. I wrote, I want you to forgive yourself for hurting yourself. Not seeing yourself. The true you. Yes. Now, don't expect others to see you if you can't recognize you. And if you can't, I am here for you. Be kinder to yourself. So when you have time to do anything while you're doing it, enjoy the moment, cherish the moment. And when you cherish the moment, that means you are so present, so present with yourself at that very moment, cherishing. It doesn't matter what you are doing, but becoming present and saying, ah, I recognize I'm doing this. I'm steering, I'm cooking, I am driving, I am present with myself. That's self-recognition, self-validation. That's, in a way, the language of love starting from not self-centered, not selfish, but self-full. Filling yourself. Okay, so I want you to do this. If you are here present, say yes, show me with an emoji, Sell me, show me anything. And I want you to do one thing. After this session is over, right here, after I am done in just a few moments, I want you to take time and I'm going to give you an assignment. This is an assignment that I sometimes give to one of my clients or many of my clients, and I want you to do this for yourself. Here, you list all your good attributes. Just list. It could be one, it could be 10. Just think of all of your good attributes that you have. List the things that make you happy or used to make you happy that you haven't done or felt or seen or uh, mm, yeah, seen, felt, heard, yeah. So what are three things or more things that make you happy? Another one, what are three things that you can change today? The patterns. You see, I erased, I put out of order, amult, shame, um, and BD for today. There is nothing shameful for today. There is nothing that I must or have to other than breathing, 
existing, appreciating, showing up for you, showing up, show up, show up for you. By showing up for you, I am also showing up for myself. That means the commitment that I made to you is also a commitment that I made to me. I showed up. So kudos to me. I had my makeup on. I signed on. I knew how to log on to my computer. I did all this. Kudos to me. And I want you to think about it that way. Another thing. Three things that if you were a role model, what would you want to be as a role model to someone else? Three things. How would you become a role model to either your younger version or to someone else? What are your strengths? So for today, those are your assignments. Your good attributes things that make you happy, things that you can change today, change, shift, pattern, and three things that you can be a role model. Hello, Annette. How are you? So I want you, once you do that, take action and say, wow, I didn't realize those are my attributes. Those are the changes that I can make. I forgot what made me happy. This makes me happy. Every week, I have beautiful flowers that I bring, and I put it right here next to me, that I have the beautiful bamboos, I have the money tree outside, I have my water fountain, I walk in my office and I say this, I love my office, so that my office everywhere that I go, every room, that energy, that sound resonates. The walls hear it, the energy transforms, the water flows, I've got my flowers, and those are the flowers that I also put right here in front of me, on my desk. This is one of my favorite flowers. This flower, believe it or not, I don't even know the name. All I know is they are gorgeous, they are blooming at this time, and you see, everything is an emotional connection. This flower, my grandmother in front of her house had two of those trees. And every time I would go to grandma's house, she would pick and give one to me or a little branch of it as I walked away. And she said, may your day be blossoming and blooming. So since then, now we took some of that and we planted it at my mom's house. So I picked some yesterday first day of the week and I brought it so in a way not only I remind my week to be blossom my day to be blossom it makes me happy because it reminds me that it was a part of grandma that is how we live life everything about us is an emotional connection so if you are feeling down have this disconnection do the exercise and if you want are ready for a bigger change to transform your life i help you evoke it embrace it and as you are ready to transform your life and evolve to greater things happier things and more of who you are this is Lisa Bubari. By trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and the founder of Heal Within, a healing center in Glendale, California. It behooves me to also share. I am also the founder of Heal Within International, a nonprofit organization that we serve motherless children. There's going to be more information on that 
And I cannot forget to say my 3E event that I'm also the founder. We've got incredible speakers coming up June 1st. I truly want ladies become a part of the 3E tribe. Let us evoke, embrace, and evolve together. Just today, I put a post that in Iran, there is this lawyer, Ms. Uh, oh my God, what is her name? Uh, Shuk, uh, oh my God, so Sohedi. Uh, I can't remember, but it, I just posted it that she was sentenced to 18 years of prison for being a woman's activist and standing up for women. That is still happening in many other countries. We are lucky if we are in America that we can still stand up for one another. We are lucky that we are in a city. I am in Glendale, California. I give thanks to our leaders for our city, for our community, the leaders that we have so many incredible women that are leaders of their own in our community. And three of those leaders are going to be a part of my panel, the speaker's panel. Then we have fire dance, we have drum circle, we have lunch, we have healing activities to help you shed a light in who you are, shed the things that you no longer want, and be the essence, the true essence, the best version of you. So join me at the 3E event. I will put all the links, share everything here for you. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you next week.